In this video, I'll show you the very first steps with your Engine 3 Auto Guider. Unboxing, hook up the cables, first settings and the one push feature. Let's go! When you unbox your Engine, you'll first see the Engine itself as well as the AutoGuider camera and the adapters that are needed to connect the camera to your guide scope or off-axis guider. Which adapter you need in the end depends on your configuration. My guide scope, for example, has a T2 thread, so I use the appropriate connector to screw the camera onto my guide scope. But maybe your back focus distance is much longer, so you might need the extension tube that is delivered as well with your engine. This extension tube can also be used as a 1.25 inch eyepiece like mounting. In the next step, we are going to wire up everything. First of all, connect your camera with the delivered USB cable to your engine. No worries, you can't do it wrong. Next one is the ST4 type auto guider cable. Push it carefully into your engine and connect it to the ST4 port of your mount. The second delivered USB cable is used for a power connection. You can either use your laptop or PC to power up the engine or you can use such a smartphone connector or any similar. If you want to release the shutter of your camera via your engine device, you need an additional custom-made cable that doesn't come with your engine. There are actually two audio jack kind of ports at the bottom of your engine. Make sure you only use the left one to connect your camera. To start the engine, push either the escape or set button, but don't push the escape button more than 3 seconds as you start the boot menu like that. At first you will always see the one push screen, but before you use this function for the first time, you need to set up a few settings. Press escape to get access to the main menu. In general, to get a step back in the menu, push escape. With the arrow keys, you can navigate up and down, left and right within the menus. The set button is your enter button. As our first step, we want to create dark frames to make sure the engine does not guide on a hot pixel. Navigate to dark frames and confirm by pushing the set button. It's recommended that no light at all reaches the camera sensor while making dark frame. So let's be sure to cover your guide scope carefully. It's not enough to just hold your hand in front of the camera to really make sure that no light at all interferes with our dark frames. I use a black hood to cover the camera. Turn out the light and you're ready to go. Navigate to set dark frame and confirm OK by pushing the set button. You will again get a notification that by all means your camera should be covered with the lens cap. Your engine now takes a series of pictures with different exposure times which will be used from now on as a library. This is a one-time procedure, but it's recommended to refresh your dark library every couple of months or so. When this process is finished, you will probably get a warning just in case something went wrong. For instance, some light streaks are in your dark frames. Otherwise, you can proceed. With the check mark set, your dark frames will automatically load it from the engine's SD card each time you will use it. 
Second, we need to set up a few things that are really important for a successful auto guiding. To do so, navigate to the Guider Setup tab. First, we need to enter the focal length of your guide scope. Push the up and down buttons to change the numbers here and confirm them with pushing the set button. Maybe you need to get used to this special kind of navigation with those buttons, but after a short while, this will be easy as one, two, three. Set up the guide speed as well. You need to make sure this relates to the settings in your mount. Now the engine is capable to scale all guiding errors in arc seconds. A nice feature is the possibility to roughly focus the engine during the day. To do so, navigate to live image. As the camera is very sensitive, you need to dial down all the settings here to their minimum values to get a good image during the daylight. So, get the gain value to 1, stretch to 1 and the exposure time to 2 to 4 milliseconds. Although we've dialed down everything here, I recommend to point your guide scope to something dark in the distance, like a rooftop or some trees. This is what I did here and I used those trees to focus my guide scope at least roughly. Now during the night time it should be no problem at all to see some stars in the display using the live view mode. To fine-tune focus, navigate to Star Search. If you select Search Stars here and confirm by pushing the Set button, the engine automatically selects a couple of stars as well as the appropriate gain and exposure settings. You will now get a detailed view of the selected stars. You can navigate up and down to choose single stars and maybe select or deselect one or more of them. The sum image is the one we use to focus and as you can see the sum image comes with a measurement of the full width half maximum. Now it's your job to turn the focuser knobs until you reach a minimum value for this FWHM value. You might need a little practice and some experience to get a feeling what might be your best value to reach here. But after a short while, this becomes second nature. Now it's really time to start the auto guider. Navigate back to the one push tab, select start guiding and wait for the magic to happen. The Engine 3 now starts with its automatic calibration procedure and after a few seconds it automatically starts guiding. Now you can start your imaging session, lean back and wait for some beautiful round stars. Thanks for watching and have fun with your Engine 3 Autoguider.